Microplastics in our arteries may increase the risk of heart attack, stroke and death. A new study has showed the explosion in the use of plastic in our daily lives has seen the increase in the levels of microplastics in our environment, our food and drinks. For those who do not know, microplastics are extremely small plastic particles that come from the degradation of plastic. And increasingly, scientists are becoming concerned about the potential impact of microplastics on our health. Seeing that these microplastics are finding its way into our bodies via the environment, the food chain, and all aspects of daily lives. So many scientists from all over the world are studying this potential problem. A recently published study by a group of scientists from Italy found potential relationship between microplastics and cardiovascular disease and it captured the attention of scientists and the media. The study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that people who have microplastics or nanoplastics in the plaques of their carotid arteries had more than fourfold increase in the risk of heart attack, stroke or death. This was what the researchers did. They look at the arteriosclerotic plaques taken from the carotid arteries of 257 patients and they found evidence of the presence of microplastics or nanoplastics in 150 of them. Whilst there were no evidence of microplastics or nanoplastics in the arteriosclerotic plaques of the carotid arteries of the remaining 107 patients. They then monitored them over time and at the end of 34 months of follow-up, 30 out of the 150 patients who had micro or nanoplastics in their atherosclerotic plugs had heart attack, stroke or died. 30 out of 150, that's 20% of them. Whilst for the group who did not have evidence of micro or nanoplastics found in their atherosclerotic plugs, only 8 had heart attack, stroke or died after 34 months of follow-up. That is 8 out of 107, translating to 7.5%. So, Here's the main finding from this study. As can be seen from the numbers I shared earlier, the researchers found that at 34 months of follow-up, those patients with microplastics in their carotid artery plug were 4.5 times more likely to suffer a heart attack, stroke or die than the patients who did not have microplastics in their carotid artery plugs. On top of that, the researchers also found evidence of higher levels of markers of inflammation in the arterial plugs in which microplastics were found, suggesting that microplastics might potentially be causing an inflammatory response. So, what can we take away from this study? The first thing that we must be mindful of are the limitations of this study. Firstly, the study was done on patients with moderate to severe carotid artery stenosis and therefore the findings may not be representative of the general population. Secondly, this is an observational study and it is important to remember that association does not equal causation. Perhaps the presence of the microplastics found in the atheromas could just be a marker of the unhealthy lifestyle or diet. And it is this unhealthy lifestyle and diet and not the microplastics that cause the increase in the risk of heart attack, stroke or death. We simply do not know. We do not have enough information. The authors of this paper emphasized this themselves, that their results do not prove that the presence of microplastics in the atheromas had caused the increase in cardiovascular disease or death. More studies are certainly needed. So, is microplastics a health hazard or not? There are things that we know and things that we don't and where more research is needed. Let's start with what we know with some degrees of certainty. Number one is that microplastics has become a huge environmental problem. The quantity of microplastics found in the sea, air and land, especially landfills where plastic waste are dumped, is growing at an exponential rate. And microplastics are increasingly found in our food chain, both animals and plants. Microplastics are also increasingly introduced into our food and drinks through the extensive use of plastics in food packaging and preparation. And we are all consuming and inhaling more and more microplastics over time, especially in the last couple of decades compared to the decades before that. So much so that scientists, researchers are increasingly finding evidence of microplastics in our bodies, in many different organs, in our blood, lungs, heart, kidneys, intestines, and even placentas. So these are the things that are clearly known. Now we come to the things that are less clear and less conclusive. And that is, what does all this mean? What happens to all the microplastics that we consume and inhale? How much of it 
enter our bodies and stay there? And what does it do to our health in the long run? And we are very far away from having any conclusive answers to all these very important questions. A lot more scientific research is needed for us to be certain. But even as we become more and more aware and informed of the problem of increasing levels of microplastics in our environment, in our food and drinks, and even as we await more scientific research to be done to give us more answers, more conclusive answers to the implications of all this, especially to our long-term health, I would like to encourage everybody not to be overwhelmed by paranoia, and lead our daily lives filled with and driven by fear. We should not do that. We must not live like that. This is certainly not the intention of my sharing this study in this video. We should instead focus on our love for life and be motivated by our desire for good health. Let us be guided by common sense. Let us remain practical. The use of plastics in so many different aspects of daily lives, including and especially in the area of food packaging, food storage, food transport, and food preparation, is not going to go away anytime soon. There are many aspects we do not have full control of or even influence over. So let us just focus on the areas that we can control, the aspects of daily lives that we can control and choose in terms of the use of plastics, so as to minimize the consumption of microplastics in our food and drinks, especially in the use of plastic in the packaging, storage, or preparation of food and drinks. Do what we can in a practical way to minimize the use of them. We would not be able to avoid it fully. Just do our best. Avoid and minimize where we can. Making the best possible lifestyle and dietary choices must be the cornerstone in our journeys towards good health. Hi, I'm Dr. Chan. I'm a medical doctor from Singapore. My passion is in training and coaching people through one-to-one -one coaching workshops as well as online courses to help people review, change and improve their lifestyle and dietary habits to better improve their control of their diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or other lifestyle and diet-related chronic diseases.